scary because you saw something yourself? Yes, little object hovering. It was quite big actually, and then there was little ones all around it. I felt scared because I've never seen such a person like that before. Scary why? What made it scary? The eyes looked evil. Evil? Mm -hmm. And what was evil about? What I thought was maybe the, the world's going to end, maybe they're telling us the world's going to end. It was like in the world, all the trees will just go down and, and there will be no air and people will be dying. On September 16th, 1994, Zimbabwe was home to one of the most widely documented and profound mass UFO sightings in modern world history. The incident occurred at Ariel School in Rua, a small agricultural center located 22 kilometers southeast of the capital. Over 60 students, ages 5 to 12, reported that they saw multiple UFOs and even interacted with alien beings on their school playground. We saw something silver and then we quickly ran to the, lo to the logs and we saw a silver, silver thing and we saw a man standing next to it. What was it, what did it feel like when he was looking at you? I felt scared. Two days prior to the incident at Ariel, there had been a number of UFO sightings throughout Southern Africa. Numerous reports of a bright fireball passing through the night sky. On the day of the encounter, the children were outside playing for their mid-morning break. All of the teachers were in a staff room for a school-wide meeting. Okay, we were in a staff meeting and we just heard them screaming, screaming, ah, and then they were here, you know, and the child can't make that up. Behind the aerial school was a schoolyard, a large field where the children would often play. Past that area lay a rough bushland. The children weren't allowed to play in this area due to the dangers of snakes and spiders. According to the testimony of the children, a large silver craft descended from above. They came to a rest hovering above the restricted bushland area just beyond the schoolyard. As the craft descended, the children rushed to the edge of the schoolyard to get a closer look. That's when they noticed two humanoid figures. According to their testimony, the first sat atop one of the crafts, while the second moved back and forth along the ground in front of it. And then we saw something shiny, so we all ran down over there. And it was in the early morning? It was at break time. Yeah? And then we saw something shiny. And we saw two, two people. They were in black, tight black suit. And they had big eyes and a small, we didn't actually see their nose, but it was quite small, and their mouth was quite small as well. One of them was running in slow motion up across the ship, and the other one was standing beside the ship. Some of the younger children thought the little beings were Zivakwambo, a type of evil goblin from Shona folklore. They burst into tears, fearing that they would be eaten. The children described the beings as being about a meter tall with pale gray skin. Their eyes were large and emotionless and their nose and mouth were hardly discernible. As the children stood and watched, many reported the feeling of dread suddenly coming over them as they locked eyes with the beings. Apocalyptic images of a hellscape world dying from neglect and ecological destruction flooded their thoughts. What I thought was maybe the, the world's going to end. Maybe they're telling us the world's going to end. Um, well, why do you think they might want us to be scared? Mm. Because um, you, maybe because we, never, we don't look after the planet and the area properly. John Mack was a well-known Pulitzer Prize winning author and a professor at Harvard University. Mack had a long-standing interest in UFO encounters due to his extensive research into the subject matter. He had conducted a study of people who had reported having alien encounters or sightings of UFOs. His initial approach to these encounters was as an adamant skeptic, believing the people he interviewed to be mentally ill. However, he soon became convinced that many of them were describing real experiences. 
he quickly took an interest in the aerial event and the children's account of what had happened. And let me, this is, is this an idea that uh, you have had before that we don't look after the planet properly in the air? Or did this idea come to you when you had this experience? When I had this experience. 